Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets video in Practical Sheets. Today we're going to do a kind of continuation to a actually underseen video uh, in the channel uh, that does conditional dropdowns in multiple sheets. The uh, novelty today is that we're going to do it without code, just with formulas. Let's see how this is done. So this is the one I had that we did with code. Here I go to my app script. Actually, it was that complex code. So that if I do here, for example, Aston Martin, I have here automatically the models of Aston Martin. And you remember, if you saw this video, I had some makes and some models of cars that uh, from a data set, okay? So now what I can do is, we're going to delete all this. We're going to delete our code. And I will try to do it without code because it now can be done. If you asked me two years ago, I was sure that it could not be done, but now there's a very small change in data validation in Google Sheets that allows me to do it. So this is what I'm going to do. I have my first dropdown is done in a in a very simple way. I just go data, data validation, and uh, I choose list from a range, and I go here to car database, and I choose all of this. A2 to A, and I can remove the final row so that it always goes to the, to the last row that the sheet has. We do OK, we do reject input. This is not a problem and this is how I have it. OK, now I can delete all this and I can choose something. When I choose something, it, nothing will happen. So now I'm going here to my model. What I'm going to do in my model? Let's do for, for now, we're going to do just this one. Here I'm going to stand here in D. I will do a list with a filter function. And what I'm going to filter is my models, my B columns. I'm going to filter them for when the make is equal to this one over here. Okay. So here I have these three models corresponding to arrow and I can double check here. I'm just going to do a simple filter. I'm going to, to choose arrow didn't know that actually was a make they didn't know so i have these three and this is these are the three that it brought and if i choose another one i have here all my models okay this is the first thing now i can do here data validation data data validation and list from a range and actually the range will be this one i can choose from d uh two up to uh d if you want okay i'll do okay I'll reject the input and voila. And if I choose another one, this spike, then this has changed and correspondingly, this also will change. And for any other model is the same. Okay. The problem is so up to here, everything's all right. Now let's go to the second one, to the third row. So if I drag this down, the problem is that my data validation will continue to be this list. If I change this one, it will change all of these three. But there's no way, apparently, to connect this with this, this with this, this with this, with only one data validation that I can drag down, apparently. So first, if we have it this way, there will be no way because I could do it manually. I could have here, here I have this filter car, so I could just copy this, paste it here, and instead of A2, I will refer to BA3, A3, okay? And now I will go to my data validation, data, data validation, and choose not D2D, but E2E. Okay, again, a bit of zoom will it would be nice. And now it works. If I put here Apple, then it will bring the Apple. And the same here, if I want to do another one here, then I should uh, drag this, copy this formula um, and change it to A4. And now here I go to data, data validation and change this to F2 to F. So this will be unsufferable because I have to do for five or 10 rows, it will work, but for 
a hundred people, I, I, I wouldn't have the time. And the idea of this is to automatize and to uh, optimize the processes, not that I have to do everything manually. So this doesn't work. Okay, so I'm going to try to place this horizontally instead of vertically. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the duplicates. So in this filter, I'm going to wrap it in a unique function. Okay, so I have much less uh, noise and only the models I need. Next, I'm going to wrap this in a transpose function. Transpose function converts rows into columns, columns into rows. So in this case, I'm turning my column into a row. Okay. And the nice thing about this is that as I have it right now, I could drag it down and I will have the models of this make, of this make, of this make. And if this is blank, it doesn't matter. So I can bring here a new one, Excalibur, and I have my models. And here I can bring another one, Honda, and I have my models. Okay, nice. So I have the first part of my solution. Now I need the second part. The second part is in the data validation. So we're going to remove first these validations, delete, and I'm going to do data validation. I'm going to do list from a range, but instead of a column, I'm going to choose a row because this is something we can do in the drop downs for Google Sheets. So I'm going to choose all this row up to, it could be Q, but I could leave it much more, much more. You can see in the in the Honda example that it's there are a lot. Even with the with removing the duplicates, there are a lot a lot of models. Let's go here to this CC2 for now. That it's a lot. Let's hit OK. Let's reject the input. Let's save, and let's see what happens here. I have my models for Aston Martin. The nice thing, what I will want to do is th that if I drag down this, that this would work for all of this, but unfortunately it does not work. Why? Because of the fixed and free references that work in Google Sheets. So if we go here to data validation, I don't know if you remember, but when I put this the first time, this was without this currency sign, dollar sign in front of it. it. Data validation in Google Sheets automatically puts the dollar sign on front of the letter and front of the row. Okay. But a year ago, they included this little message that says tip, use absolute reference to lock rows and columns. This wasn't before. And what this means is that if they are saying that you can use absolute reference, this means that we can also don't use it. Okay, so I'm going to do it again. I'm going to remove the validation so that you notice I'm going to do data validation again, choose from D2 up to whatever CL2. I'm going to click OK. Here it doesn't have this dollar sign. I'm going to reject. I'm going to say, let's go again to my data validation. And now you can see that automatically sheets included the dollar sign. The trick here is that I can remove it. Once I put it, I click save, I go out, got out and went again to the data validation. This is a very weird thing that happens. I can remove this and click save. And if I go once again to my data validation, now I don't have it. So it is again, very strange. The first time it will mandatorily put the dollar sign because I, I don't know, maybe because it thinks that it's the right thing to do and only pro users or power users like you that are watching this video will know the trick that is to go again to the data validation. So now I click save again and here comes the magic. When I drag this down, removing the dollar sign, here I have my Aston Martins, here I have my Apple models, here I have my Adler models, here I have my Excalibur models, here I have my Honda models, here I don't have anything. Okay, so this is the big trick. Nothing more, actually it's very simple. I just, I'm a very long explainer, so I last more explaining than the actual doing. But like everything, you need to do it a couple of dozen of a hundred times just so you get the gist of it and do it more quickly.
So that's it. Basically, that's it. I just want to do one thing is that I don't like to have this here because normally you will have not only two columns in your tables, but you'll have five, 10, 20, 100. So I would like this to be on another sheet. So I'm going to add a new sheet. I'm going to call this house dropdown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, this function. I'm going to paste it here. This will have some errors because I need to uh, set up. Actually, the only thing I need to change is this A2. I'm going to delete it here. I'm going to go to my input and I will choose the A2, but in my input sheet, I'll click enter and I have here my drop down list or the list that will be in my drop downs. Now I can go down here much more easily. I can go control shift down one and two times and control D to copy the formula in all my rows. And now what I'm going to change is my dependent dropdown data, data validation, list from a range, auxiliary dropdown, I'm going to choose this up to control shift right, and control shift right again. Okay. I'm going to reject it. You can see again that here, I don't have any dollar signs. I will save. I will go again to my data validation and magically the, the dollar sign is on. So I have to remove it manually here. Save again, control shift down, control D to duplicate. Now I can delete all of this and voila, it, it is working. Okay. So there are some mistakes, some errors with this. I still prefer the code. The code for me is cleaner, is leaner. For example, if I go here, AMC, and I choose something here, and then I go here and choose another one, I will have an error here, which still I can correct with a, with a very simple code. So this is one of the errors. So still I need to use code for this to be perfect. The other thing is that Let's see here, here, my data validation right now says A4 to CI4 in my auxiliary dropdown. Okay. So it's very good. It goes here, A4, all of this diplomat and Trump junior. Okay. Perfect. What happens if I insert a row here, row above, and I choose here, now I'm C, let's choose Aston Martin. Here I have Eagle and Hornet. That is the one up here. Why? If I go to my data validation here, it chose A3, C13. It copied the one from above. So be very careful with this because once you start deleting or inserting rows, the formulas will damage. So you have to be very careful. Again, this is why I prefer to do it on code. But if you are certain that you won't insert rows, but just at the end, so this is not a problem. Okay, so this is it. I hope you like it. I hope uh, this works for you in some cases, because I think that for a simple basis, this will work fine and you don't have to do code. So it, as always, you need to have your, your kit of tools in Google Sheets and you know when to use code, when not to use code, depending on the project. Hope you liked it. And as always, you can support me just by subscribing to the YouTube channel and hitting on the notification button, or you can go uh, the extra mile and uh, supporting me on Patreon. Not only for me to keep doing these videos, but you can also download all the codes, all the templates. Okay. So see you next time. Thank you so much.